Welcome to another episode of Cooking with PRTC. I'm your host, Mark McRoy, and today we're going to make homemade spaghetti sauce. We're going to finish it up with a salad with homemade blue cheese dressing. And for a bread, we're going to use pita bread with toasted mozzarella um, with garlic and olive oil, just to mix things up a little bit. We'll be right back and hope you join us. Welcome back. We're going to start right now with our spaghetti, and we're going to turn on our oven on a very nice medium heat. I'm going to cut up a few of our, well, let's go ahead and put the hamburger in. As usual, I'm going to try and take it easy on the um, seasoning so you can still taste the meat. And you can break the meat up, but even when you're making hamburgers, you don't want to just keep kneading it. It breaks the fat down too much, and we're using a low-fat meat to start with, so we don't want to just destroy the texture. We put that in there. Little bit of garlic salt, about two tablespoons. And just a little bit of regular salt. Regular being pink Himalayan freshly ground, of course. Okay. I'm gonna let that cook. Take our nice sharp knife. We start off with a pound of hamburger. And as usual, I'm using um, a 90% beef, 10% fat. If you're a hunter or you have a good friend that's a hunter who supplies you with meat, in all honesty, crushed venison or ground venison works great. We have a very funny story. We had a cover dish at church one night and they asked me and two other guys to do spaghetti. And I won't mention any names, Bucky McCormick and Steve Edwards, but um, we all made our own spaghetti sauce and brought it. And Mine was a little spicy, his had a little of this, and his had a little of that. But so we just decided to mix them all together. And when we finished, it was really delicious. But some of the ladies came into the Douglas Hall where we were serving, and they were like, oh, Mark, I'm so glad you were cooking. I knew if Bucky or Steve did it, they would have venison in it. So we didn't say anything. There was not one spoonful of spaghetti sauce left. And plus, after it was over, we all compared notes, and all three of us had used venison. So... In all honesty, when you're starting to cook with different sausages, um, the peppers, the onions, the garlic, um, it's not going to hurt you. You'll never know the difference. And if you've got somebody over for dinner who doesn't care for venison, don't tell them. Besides that, the venison is extremely low in fat and it has a really good flavor. Plus, if someone's good enough to go out and harvest a deer, the least you can do is help them eat it. Okay. Do that just so it goes around a little bit more. It's a great thing about the farm. Um, again, trying to keep the fat down. I use the um, all beef, no pork, uh, Hillshire Farm sausage. Just trying to cut the fat down. Believe me, it's enough fat in there as it is. We're going to let, let this meat brown, and then we'll put this in here and let it brown. And we'll come right back. Thank you for joining us. We've got our hamburger browning right now. And you can leave a little color in it, which is great, because it's going to cook once it gets in the sauce anyway. Dump it all in there. That's the great thing about using the 90%. That's all the grease that's in there. And any grease that's in there doesn't go inside our little systems. Now, what I've got here is three cans of just stewed tomatoes. If you've got a preference of Del Monte over Heinz or generic or whatever, feel free to use them. Um, sometimes they'll have them that they're already seasoned with oregano or mushroom or garlic, that works fine. In our frying pan, we're gonna take our sausage that we've just diced. We're gonna brown this before we put it in the sauce. It's gonna do two things. It's gonna bring out a little bit more flavor, give a little bit of different texture, and also it's gonna allow us to get a little bit more grease in that frying pan. So that way when we finish dicing up our vegetables, we can put that in the grease and that way it can um, give it a little bit more flavor and keep it from sticking to the pot. Pot, frying pan. 
Okay. Put that on about a medium heat and get started on our vegetables. If you have a preference on how you like these shaped, cut them shoestring. If you've got one of those nifty difty, handy dandy Ronco Julianne fry maker things, they work great. I find it's easier to do this instead of cleaning the silly things. But at the same time, I have one and it works great. It's a wonderful thing about these things during this time of the year. I know a lot of people use spaghetti and all your different stews and perlos during the winter. During the spring and the summer, starting to get some of our vegetables coming out of Florida. Um, some of the fresh ones out of Mexico. Of course, we prefer the ones out of Florida. But they are just wonderful. Spring vegetables are fantastic. We'll do a stir fry one day. Bring a little bit of that flavor out. The onions, if you like red onions, you like Vidalia onions, you like green onions, whatever you want. It's your spaghetti sauce, make it your own, put what you like in there. Okay. I'm not as fast as those guys on TV. But then again, I still have all the skin on the end of my fingers. I find it's a lot better to take your time instead of saying, why is that red sauce extra red? happened more times than I care to admit. I actually like the prep part of it, cutting up the vegetables. I took it easy on the Vidalia onions and the red onions and the bell peppers just so y'all could see that I know how to cook with something besides that. But also, these will give it a little bit different texture, a little bit different flavor. We've got something else here that is just, if you like, we'll get into that in a second. And yes, if I'd have been smart, I would have held all three of them together and we could have done this twice as fast. But I didn't, so you have to watch. Okay. Now, these are the greatest things ever made. It's a portobello mushroom. There's probably nothing wrong with that. I just get in the habit of cutting the stems off or the stalks. These are the most versatile things in the world. If, for whatever reason, you decide to be a vegetarian, you can have these instead of meat. These are great. You can rub these with olive oil and put them on your grill. Um, you can turn them over just like that and take the stem out, put a little crab meat in there, and then um, cover it with a little hollandaise sauce or anything, and then just serve it straight. It is fantastic. They have a great flavor. I'm gonna go over here and check on our sausage. Turn that up just a little bit. I like these to get a little bit more caramelized than they are here. This has still got a lot of the flavors coming out of it. But at the same time, we're going to get a little bit more caramel on there. And then we'll be ready to put that in with the other part. This is the same as our tomatoes. What we're going to do here is just put that in. Gives a little bit of a base. In the summertime, like we said, we've got here all these great tomato farmers. If you've got time, take your tomatoes, take the cores out, boil them, pull the skin off, chop them up, and you can make your whole sauce from just the tomatoes. You'll never taste anything like it. It'll be wonderful. Now, cooking with wine. Now, if you want to talk about bourbon, I can help you. Cooking with wine, I know very little about it. I know if it has a cork in it, it's good. 
The other thing that I do about cooking with wine is I pick the one with a cool label. Or if you know somebody who knows what they're doing, it's good. Just a little bit of that in there. And if you don't like wine, water works just great. Okay, it's coming together just about perfect. Mm. Tastes delicious, smells delicious. Sausage is coming together. Get a little bit of a glaze on it. We're just about ready to throw our vegetables in there. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay. Back on the heat. Tell you the truth. You can just do the sausage and the vegetables together and serve them over a piece of French toast and it's really good. Italian toast, French toast for breakfast. That wouldn't be too good. A little garlic and butter and everything. Some of the toast from one of the previous episodes. That is really tasty. A little olive oil. We'll let that stew for a second. And we'll come right back. Thank you. Welcome back. We'll get started here with our homemade blue cheese dressing. Simple ingredients. Mayonnaise and yes, Dukes. And that's all that matters. Um, whole buttermilk. Blue cheese dressing. Little salt, little garlic, and some Tabasco sauce. And the reason I... It, try and reiterate the Dukes is you got some people out there. We tried to watch our fat on the meat and we tried to watch our fat on the sausage, live a little, and go ahead and get the real, may real mayonnaise. Okay. Tell you the truth, I have fought with forever. And that's one great thing about cooking is everybody's in the kitchen with you and they're always asking you, how come you're using a fork? Why don't you use a whisk? Like, I don't want a whisk. Well, it doesn't take long to figure out. That's like 14 forks all in one thing. So it works faster. Yes, I admit I was wrong. I should have been using a whisk for years. Okay. Now, Tabasco sauce. Precise measurement is important, about that much. A um, little bit of garlic salt, teaspoon, teaspoon of regular salt, and then four ounces of crumbled blue cheese. If you have a friend who is a Clemson graduate and is going up there for a basketball game, a football game, or a baseball game, Give them the money and tell them to bring you a wheel of blue cheese dressing back. Or blue cheese, not dressing. Don't get a half a wheel, don't get a quarter wheel, get a whole wheel. And that way, you can sell me half of it. But that is the best blue cheese in the world. This is just over the counter blue cheese from one of the local groceries and it is good. But the Clemson blue cheese is fantastic. We'll put that in the refrigerator and let it just ferment. Thing is, tomorrow it'll be better. It'll keep for about two weeks in your refrigerator, just covered up. I put it back in the mayonnaise jar that it came out of. But um, it'll last for about two weeks, and every day it gets better. Um, we'll be right back. We'll put the salad together. Welcome back. Let's get back to our sauce real quick. Turn that down first thing. Then we're going to take our sausage and vegetables. Just dump them right in here. Let those cook. I'm reducing this to a low heat. If you like your sauce a little thicker, you can get a can of um, tomato paste. I've never been able to tell the difference between the imported tomato paste, the Heinz tomato paste, the Hunt's tomato paste. Tomato paste tastes like tomato paste to me. 
but you can put that in there and it'll thicken it up a little bit. Like I said, low heat, I'm gonna let that join come together. Now we're gonna tar start with our spinach salad. About a half a bag of spinach. I just love spinach. If you don't use the um, mixed medley of vegetables, I just don't care for iceberg lettuce. To me, iceberg is God's way of showing off that he can make water stick together in a solid without making it freeze. You have no idea how many times I practice that to make it look good. Got our avocado. If you've got a special way of doing that, feel free. The, um, a lot of people will peel it. If I ever use a knife to peel it, I find I lose too much of the meat. An avocado, if you get it in the store, which is where you obviously have to get it unless you grow your own, but when you pick it up, if it's hard, it's not ready or it's not ripe. And you don't want it to be too soft or it just, unless you're making guacamole, then it's fine. I like to have it in a good sized chunk so you can taste it. If it is a little hard, you can actually run it over your um, grater. But again, I find the flavors better when they're just a little bit soft. Okay. Add some other vegetables for color. I cannot get enough vegetables in this time of the year. And there's so many places, they're not bad at the grocery. But again, right down the street at Breland's, any kind of produce stand on the side of the road, just great. In the morning, when I'm making my sandwiches, I'll actually use the, I'll take a squash and an avocado, squash and avocado, squash and a zucchini, and cut it up and fry it in the same grease that I just did my bacon in for my sandwich for lunch. It adds a really nice flavor to your lunch. We'll do that one day, is come up here and just do nothing but make sandwiches. I love making a sandwich. Love eating a sandwich. Okay. Couple of onions. Green onions are great. Got a good flavor in them. They're very inexpensive. Sometimes you gotta watch the people doing it because they don't know how little they cost. And they'll think they're individual and they'll weigh them and then they'll charge you for four of them when it's just one bundle and four stocks and then you end up paying four dollars for it instead of 79 cents. I say that from experience. It happened last night. Spinach salads always seem to go good with red onions, but I couldn't find any pretty ones yesterday, so that's why we're going with spring onions. But like I always say, if you like the other, put it in there. It's your salad. Okay. Portobello. These things are so versatile. I just love them. First time I tried one was out in Vegas at, um, golly, where was it? Circus Circus. They had an Italian restaurant in the back. And again, they stuffed it with crab meat and covered it with a um, hollandaise sauce and uh, grilled asparagus spears. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. Okay. They've got baby portobellas at the grocery and they're really tasty. But if you're gonna stuff it with anything, crab meat, hamburger, whatever, the big ones work better. Farm fresh eggs, always the best. If you got a friend that has chickens. If not, the ones in the grocery store are just about perfect. 
And again, a cheese grater works perfect for this. Since we're trying to get this done, and I don't want to have to wash dishes all day, we're going to use a knife. Okay. A little of that. Oranges give it a wonderful set off. As always, it's that time of the year. Oranges are coming in, fresh from Florida. But the wonderful thing about mandarin oranges is they're good all year round. You can make this salad at Thanksgiving and it tastes just as good. Give it a little color. And about two or three ounces of that'll be fine. As always, you like oranges, put more oranges in it. Okay. Now, we'll be right back. We'll put all this together and start some bread and put the noodles on. We'll be ready. Welcome back. What we're going to do now is prepare our bread. Um, a little olive oil. Olive oil is good for everything. And again, it's less fat than butter. What we're going to do is put that right there. Take our cloves. Just take the ends off. Peel these babies up. I had a source for fresh garlic. It was so good. My brother-in-law and his wife, Lawton and Jesse, had a place up in Anderson where they would grow this stuff in their yard. I don't know if they grew it or just grew wild, but man, that stuff was good. Go out in the yard, just pick one, have these huge cloves of elephant garlic, and when you took them out of the ground, they were just wet. Your hands smelled like garlic for three days, but boy, did it ever taste good. Have to give them a call. But fresh garlic from the grocery store works great. You don't have to do that with your thumb, but one time with a very good knife and a piece of garlic to realize you need to put that on the ground to do it. Okay. If you ever watched the movie Goodfellas, they had a spot in there where they would take the garlic and slice it and then cook it in olive oil and it was really good. If you do this, it works just as good. It's a lot faster. It's kind of fun too. That's a big one, so we're going to do both on that one. Okay. I'm telling you what, you can use garlic salt, you can use minced garlic, whatever you want. Ain't nothing in the world tastes like this. That brings out so much flavor. We'll put this over here on our high heat. And all we're gonna do is break that down a little bit in the garlic salt, in the garlic. I'm having trouble talking today. In our olive oil and garlic, let that sit. Today we're gonna to use pita bread. Cut it up into quarters. Pizza bread is great for sandwiches. It just comes right apart, opens right up. But what we're gonna do is make toast out of it. You don't know how much we're living on the edge here because I can mess up a piece of bread in a second when it comes to toasting. If you have a bunch of bread eaters, make more. Because I'm telling you what, this is going over good. Good. Really works good at a party as well. If you want an hors d'oeuvre um, instead of chips, you can do these and cut them into eighths instead of quarters and serve them with a nice hummus or uh, whatever you want. I'm trying to think of what's the, um, the olives that are crushed up or cream cheese or salmon or anything, but it really just tastes good. And that's three. Okay. Check our garlic here. Turn that off, and as always, I just wish you could smell this. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm just going to put a little bit on there. And you'll notice I'm leaving the garlic off. 
We're just going to spread the olive oil on there so that we can make sure it's done. And then we'll come back and split the garlic on there, split it around evenly. We'll put it in the oven for a couple of minutes just till it turns crisp. Then we're going to take our fresh mozzarella and top it. We'll serve that. While you were gone, we took the butter, I mean the water, and got ready for the noodles. We're going to use angel hair pasta. It cooks really well, evenly. A little bit of it goes a long way. Um, it also is thin enough that you spend more time tasting the sauce than you do on the noodles. Okay. Because we're not having spaghetti noodles, we're having spaghetti sauce. Okay. And from the smoke over there, I can see that my water is ready for my noodles. When you're doing your noodles, doing your noodles, preparing your water, I put in olive oil. If you've got just regular cooking oil, that'll work fine. Um, chicken bouillon and some salt. There's no sense in the noodles tasting just like noodles. Okay. We'll put this in the oven. We'll put our noodles on and we'll come back and eat. Welcome back. Getting ready to have dinner. We've got our spinach salad with avocados, mushrooms, different kinds of vegetables, and oranges. It's going to be fantastic. Homemade blue cheese, my mother's secret recipe that you just saw. Pasta um, with chicken bouillon, olive oil, and salt. And our spaghetti sauce that you helped us make. And our cheese toast pita bread. We'll be right back. We'll plate it up and let's get some people to try it out. Thanks. Welcome back to Cooking with PRTC. Our guests today are Will and Russ. Um, we're going to try our spaghetti with our pita bread and spinach salad. Y'all dig in and let us know what you think. All righty. This looks great. If you don't care for it, please don't spit it out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Thank you very much. Folks, thank you again for joining us as always, and we'll look forward to seeing you again on Cooking with PRTC.